Thanks for joining everyone. We're going to give it a minute or two to let everybody file into the, the Zoom webinar. Thanks for joining us today. Hi everyone, I want to thank you for joining us today for the Predicting Employee Attrition webcast using Oracle Machine Learning, Oracle Apex, and Oracle Analytics Cloud. Charlie, whenever you're ready, you can take it away. All right, thank you very much, Suzanne. Uh, hello everyone and welcome to this uh, webinar. On sh We're going to try and show you, uh, we have a team of us here assembled, we're going to try and show you how you can uh, solve a simple problem, predicting employee attrition, and we're going to use a few Oracle technologies and products here. We're going to use the autonomous database uh, that comes with Oracle Machine Learning, and we're going to use a, a Oracle Application Express, uh, which also comes with the autonomous database, and then we're going to use Oracle Analytics Cloud to show the results. Uh, also, uh, in OAC, we're going to show them in Apex as well. Um, hi, I'm Charlie Berger. I'm the Senior Director of Product Management, and with me I have uh, some very talented people uh, you'll see their names there, Derek Cameron, Devani Sheth, Sadesh Eugeni, Rosie Parmer, and Philippe Leone. And each of these people will come in and sort of introduce themselves and take a segment um, and, you know, go a lot, you go through a live demo of that. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing this, and I think it really shows off uh, the art of the possible uh, that's becoming just more and more easy to get done using these, um, you know, technologies. Um, so the main strategy that, that I will talk about uh, as being uh, the product manager for the machine learning stuff is that our strategy with the Oracle database is to make the database a smarter, more capable database. And we do that by not moving data in and out of the database to another platform. But we do it by making the database smarter. So we always say we move the algorithms, not the data. So yes, we have the database be able to build and run neural network models as a native in database paralyzed uh, function. Uh, we do uh, support vector machines, we do clustering, we do structured data on structured data, and so I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but once you do that, it enables the database to be a very smart, intelligent database that you can solve problems uh, much more efficiently and quickly like the, the one we're gonna try and show you. So we're always required to show a safe harbor statement in case we mention anything about futures. I don't think we're showing anything about futures in this presentation. I think everything you see uh, is available, and in fact, we've taken the code for this demo, and we've put it out on GitHub, so you can download it and run it yourself. So the goal is to share how to solve a typical machine learning problem as, and, and present more of a solution using the above, uh, to, you know, using those technologies. And uh, I'll do a quick overview of machine learning, and then Derek's gonna walk us through the detailed uh, Oracle Employee Attrition Notebook uh, and show you how he solves the problem. And then uh, I think we turn it over to Rosie, and uh, Sadesh and uh, uh, Devani are gonna walk us through how to take the Oracle Application Express and build an application and view and peruse the results using that. It's very, and that could be a mobile solution, you know, mobile device, whatever you wanna do. Oracle Application Express does a many things. Then we're gonna have Philippe come in and show Oracle Analytics Cloud and the new integration uh, that comes with that where now you can register an Oracle machine learning model and apply it from the OAC Cloud. And that just opens up a lot of, uh, possibilities uh, there. And then we're gonna show you a bunch of resources and links on how to get started and how to get this, uh, this code. So uh, you may have seen recently, uh, as recently I think as the Oracle Open World, the last one that happened, uh, Oracle changed its mission statement to say, our mission is to help people see data in new ways, discover insights and unlock endless possibilities. And it's been doing uh, this um, strategy, Oracle has been doing this strategy for a number of uh, years. And, and uh, rather than having a separate database for uh, JSON documents or in memory or spatial and graph or a separate analytical platform for machine learning, um, the Oracle database has over the years just added those capabilities to the database. And if you've seen some of the uh, messaging, I, I, the one I like the best is from Juan Loeza. If you Google that Oracle, uh, Juan Loeza Oracle Converged Database, you'll see that on YouTube. 
uh, he articulates how Oracle now, uh, he articulates very well how Oracle, <laughs> better than I'm doing, how Oracle has this converged database that ha it has it's, uh, reduced the complexity. It can store many different data types. Uh, it has uh, open standard SQL access. It includes REST APIs. And the one that we're most excited about is at the bottom, the discovering new insights and making predictions using the machine learning. So that's what we're going to drill on, uh, drill down in on uh, now. The way we do that is using uh, what is now a free feature of the database. As of December 5th, 2019, Oracle decided to um, not charge separately for the machine learning, also for the Oracle spatial and graph uh, capabilities. Oracle decided, let's just make this a much more differentiated database. So in every enterprise edition of the database and autonomous database, you now have these, these features. And in the case of machine learning, uh, it's pretty amazing. So Oracle Machine Learning now extends the database and enables users to build AI applications and analytical uh, dashboards. And Oracle Machine Learning delivers powerful in-database machine learning algorithms um, and automated machine learning functionality, something called AutoML that we'll talk about and some other things, automatic data preparation and so on. And it exposes those to various different types of users through using uh, the, the native SQL function, which is what these algorithms are at their core. Uh, most of them, they're just pure you know, in database written as C code, but exposed as SQL uh, APIs, uh, algorithms that you can run. You can also access those from the language of R and very soon the language of Python. If you, if your data science team speaks Python or R, it's our um, uh, design objective to support all the different native tongues of, of uh, machine learning, whether that's a GUI or a notebook or whatever. Um, and so what we're trying to do is make uh, machine learning very, very simple. Derek's gonna come in and do a demo of the notebooks, the upper right, that come packaged with the autonomous database. So that's where it really gets simple. You just go to the autonomous database, you, you, you fire it up and you go to the notebooks and you're off and running. So in total, what we have for an offering then is, is sort of multifaceted, right? If you are using the drag and drop on premise, uh, a Dragon uh, Oracle Data Miner, so this little bar right here is trying to indicate to the left is on premise. Uh, they can use, you can use that with SQL Developer. It's the drag and drop Oracle Data Miner that hopefully many of you are familiar with. Uh, also, you can use something like an R Studio to drive these algorithms and in-database functions uh, using um, R, the language of R, and then it maps to and processes uh, the in-database functions to do that. Up on the cloud, you can use the new notebooks that currently speak SQL, but they will be in the very near future also will be adding the R, the, excuse me, the Python language. So you can start typing in Python here and it'll map to these same functions. And then after that, we'll have, we'll have support for R as well. So we have quite an offering. We also have the ability to pull in data and query it using things like Oracle Big Data SQL and Oracle Cloud SQL, where sometimes what you want to do is sort of boil down the data lakes. There may be counts or totals or changes over time. Maybe the number of tweets you do that have certain words in them, things like that. You might want to boil that down or temperatures or the number of dropped calls. And you want to sort of take totals and changes over time and join that to the rest of your data. So now you have this very sort of complete um, you know, 360 degree view of the customer that's much more easily you know, assembled for data using the Oracle technologies, but also you can now more easily analyze all that data in place in the database uh, or the autonomous database. The algorithms that we support are, are, are they just grow with, with each new release. We're over 30 now. Um, so if you're doing classification, which is what we're ultimately doing in this case, we're gonna use um, logistic regressions, naive bays, decision trees, random forest. Uh, for clustering, we have three different types of clustering. We have anomaly detection. In red, I've highlighted the new ones. They're coming very soon. Um, so there's XGBoost coming. There's something called MSET SPRT, which is another sort of process uh, anomaly detection algorithm is coming along. So quite a range of, of techniques are available now inside the database. And these are all free. So with these uh, uh, machine learning uh, functions, you can do a lot of things like predicting or anticipating which employees are likely to leave and, 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 and run your business a little smarter in that way. Now, some of the other things we're not going to have time to show are there's, it's in the fine print, right? If you want to do a partitioned model, like I'd like to, per, I'd like to pr predict which employees are likely to leave or go, leave or stay, but I want to partition that by, let's say, state or region. That's just a partition by clause. If I want to use unstructured data, like what's their resume, what's their review comments by their manager, that just comes in as unstructured data, and we use Oracle Text to tokenize all that data and bring that as a vector of uh, tokenized terms as well. So there are a lot of additional things that we do and open up uh, new possibilities by bringing the algorithms to the database. As I said before, if, you, if your native tongue is R, 
or very soon Python. You can also drive these same algorithms um, using those languages. You can also do whatever you want in R and Python, but the real gain is to be able to use the in database uh, functions um, for, for you know, developing uh, higher volume uh, scalable uh, solutions. So the use case we're gonna jump into now is predicting voluntary employee attrition using Oracle Machine Learning. Um, and the use case is, is using some data we got from Kaggle. So if you go out to Kaggle, there's an employee attrition data set. And we're just gonna show a simple, you know, sort of beginning, middle to end sort of use case. So based on historical data on employees who voluntarily leave the company, build a predictive model for an early warning system, like who's likely to leave. And maybe if we know why, what are the reasons, uh, maybe we can do something about that. We're gonna um, go through various steps. Some of these have already been done. And at the end, we're gonna view the results. So I'm gonna turn it over to Derek now, who's gonna show us how to walk through um, this notebook that he's created that is uh, pretty cool. I hope you like it. And this is out on GitHub if you wanna try it out yourself afterwards. At this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Derek who can introduce himself and, uh, and take it away. Thank, take it away, Derek, thank you. Hey, Derek. Hey, Derek. Can, 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 can you hear us? I see a like a black shadow That's in your face. Yeah. There you go. Now you now you came in visually now. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, Charlie. As you know, I'm having network issues. So. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna so, go off yeah, camera Derek here. Cameron, working on sorry. Can you hear me, Charlie? Yes, I can. Charlie. Okay, yes, I sorry. Um, so I'll share my screen, Charlie. Yes. Can you see that? All right. Sorry about the technical difficulties, Derek from here in North America Sales. Uh, I built this machine learning notebook for a large customer. Uh, it took me about four hours. If you are a SQL guy like me, you're going to find Oracle Machine Learning to be very natural and very uh, easy to, to learn. I'm not a data scientist. Um, I took an existing notebook that was used to build a, a different use case. I modified it for this customer to uh, swap out different data sets so that I could predict deploy attrition, which is a use case that they were interested in. Um, machine learning comes with the autonomous database. I saw a question in Q&A earlier that said, um, that was asking, well, can I use it on my on-premise 12? Derek just cut out. Uh, can you still hear me? Uh, I can hear you, but your screen stopped sharing. Uh, oh, let me do that again. I know it's Derek. I'm I'm wondering if your screen sharing is problematic. Should I share my screen while you talk to it? Uh, that's fine. Yeah, go ahead, Charlie. Okay, because I, I just uh, let me make sure I uh, am in a position to do that. I think I. Uh, I mean, if your if your internet is is uh, giving you challenges right now, um, please take over whenever you're ready to go. But I will at least just kind of keep the thing. Oh, I see it now. Is that yours or mine? Yeah, I'll try one. Charlie, um, I'll try one more time. So hey, I was, as I was saying, all the different database versions support it. Uh, Autonomous does support the Zeppelin notebooks. And Zeppelin notebooks come baked in right off the console, including uh, Apex SQL Developer and um, Oracle Machine Learning. So you can, you, it, it comes with Autonomous uh, right off the console. Uh, if, if you when I go through all the code that's in this notebook, you might have a question, well, can I run that code in SQL Developer or SQL Plus? And the answer is yes. And the advantage of having it from, from Autonomous Database is that you get the notebook technology, which gives you the narr narration of what's going on. It allows you to do visualizations, to take a look at the results. But at the end of the day, you can build models and deploy models using any SQL interface. So let me just go through this notebook. Uh, we start generally by looking at the process. We have a business understanding, we look at the data, we prepare the data, we build our models, we evaluate those models, and then we deploy the models. In this particular case, for this use case, 
Um, this year was a, a predicting employee attrition, and we used this data set, and the data set included information about the employees, some of who uh, left the company and some who stayed. It includes very intuitive information, things like their job level, their job role, their job satisfaction, whether they're married, their monthly income, have they had a, a raise? Uh, what was their, you know, what is their uh, hourly rate, uh, performance metrics, et cetera? So this is uh, intuitively clear what somebody might say, somebody might believe. Uh, typically, we start looking at the data that come with the notebook. We have table, uh, table views, uh, charts pie charts, uh, area charts, uh, line charts, and scatter charts. Hey, Derek. Hey, Derek. I, I know you're yes. having uh, internet challenges there, right? You're, you're coming in like uh, every other word kind of thing right now. The, we can see the video. I don't know how to get more bandwidth. Does it? The video is now looking okay, but your sound is not great. Yeah, is sorry a, about that, Charlie. I'm not sure too much I can do about it. I can switch my network connection, but um, maybe we should move on to... Well, I can, the, I can show, if it helps with bandwidth, I can show the notebook and you can speak to it if that helps with bandwidth. I just don't know if it will okay, or not. I'll stop sharing. Go ahead and share, um, Charlie. Okay, let me let me see if I can. Then you can you can talk to it. I'll just show the. Um, let's see where is it here. Here is your notebook. Okay, so there it is. Yeah, I, I can see that. Thanks, Charlie. Just scroll down a little. Maybe we can walk through this together. So as I was saying, we have visualizations on top of the data, and and we typically look at the data, make sense of it be, before we build our models. We don't throw machine learning model building against data randomly. We typically exclude data points that don't make sense, that create noise in the model and actually reduce the accuracy. Scroll down a bit there, Charlie. Um, and so we look at the data and then we do things like, uh, there's another visualization, the scatter chart, but we, look, we do things like binning and uh, Oracle Machine Learning has automated binning procedures. Uh, the binning procedures allow you to configure for multiple different bin widths, equal width bins, equal number of bins. So there's all sorts of flexibility in, in, in uh, looking at the data. Scroll down a bit more, Charlie. So as we, as, and then we visualize those uh, bin data. You can see that uh, the binning has a nice uh, bell curve in terms of the distribution of the data. Scroll down. We've been this, um, we've been this data by department, and now we get into the first actual machine learning model building uh, um, algorithm, and it's an attribute importance model. And for those of you who know SQL, you look at it and go, yeah, that's just a, a procedure call. So it's, uh, it allows you to, in this case, identify the variables that are most predictive of whether or not an employee will stay or whether they'll leave. And you can see that overtime is the top, then job level, then monthly income. And so it ranks these and gives you a relative importance uh, measure of those attributes that, can, that are used to predict whether or not somebody will stay or leave. Further, you'll see that we have some statistics as well. Uh, statistics are useful for understanding what the data looks like. If you scroll down a little bit further, and these statistics, uh, as you know, I mean, if you're an Oracle person over many, many years, there's hundreds of SQL functions to do just about every conceivable thing. And so we used a DBMS, uh, DBMS stats function to crank out in one command, things like cardinality, mins, maxes, standard deviations, means, all the different things that might be useful in understanding what it is that we're looking at. So let's scroll down, Charlie, to the, uh, to the model building itself. So scroll down further. These are just the statistics. We also look at correlation, by the way, as well. 
uh, data points, uh, attributes. I've got you at the 16-40 uh, split. Sorry, Charlie, my uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're, we got you at the 60-40 split, and then we, we you, you uh, stepped out, you uh, cut out. Yeah. yeah, so scroll down to the model building process, uh, Charlie. So we uh, we begin by building models, and, and we need, and what we're doing is we're gonna build the models, evaluate them, and then compare them and pick the best one. We pick five classification models here. Now hey, Derek, phase, did you want Derek, do you want to point out that this was only four seconds, two seconds, three seconds, one second, and the amount of data that we're running here? Right. So a lot of mining platforms need and require you to pull the data out. Um, if you have a compute instance, a lot of the recommendations is, well, just scale up while you still have to move the data. This, these models were built on a single CPU machine. That's the very smallest machine. Um, these models take anywhere from about one to two seconds. Uh, depending on uh, depending on what else is going on in the database, uh, very very fast. I did a bit of a stress test on this, Charlie. I ran a 1.6 million uh, rows. Uh, did a prediction on that, and it took uh, it took about 16 seconds to score 1.6 million rows on a single OCPU machine. So uh, that's just one of the benefits of doing things in the database. It, it's very, very fast. I'm just going to say run all below here, Derek, just for the heck of it. What's that? Yeah, sure. I'll say run all below just while you're talking. Everybody can yeah. kind of see, just kind of go. Keep so, going. Yeah, so, so it's super fast. We're going to look at, the, we're going to build the models, we're going to evaluate the models, and then we're going to pick the best one. In this case, it's a support vector machine. If you scroll down, let's take a look at some other interesting things we can do now that we have the model built. How do we know it's any good? So if you go down to the uh, cumulative gains chart, well, what is this? What is this telling us? This cumulative gains chart is comparing the models versus random guessing. So if you look at the straight line, the straight line is a random guess. What it tells you is if I if I take a 10% sample, I can expect to get 10% of the people that would leave. That's 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 you know that's intuitively uh, obvious but if i use our model to uh to focus on employees we think will leave you can see that on a 10 percent uh you can see that the line the, the gap between the lines the curved lines and the straight line is the benefit of using uh using a prediction model to select the employees so for example, for 10% per, 10, uh, for 10 of the employees, we can expect to get 50% using the model instead of just 10%. So it's five times better than a random guess. And the remaining uh, charts that you can see here are really uh, charts that continue to evaluate the accuracy of the model, things like uh, ratio of false positives to false negatives, uh, precision, recall, these are all measures uh, that, a, um, that a data scientist would use to understand their model accuracy better. Uh, I'd also point out that I put in comments and information about those charts, so if you don't understand them, just look at the, uh, the code, the description under the chart. If you expand that, Charlie, you'll see, um, you'll chart. see some, some narrative that I put in there. There. Uh, you got and some more got a refresh so, yeah, pop so, right here, but because I probably shouldn't have run that thing. But uh, yeah, here's stuff. There's a lot of um, instructions that Derek's put in here, which is really good, guys. Yeah, and then if we go down, if we look at individual, well, let's look at the accuracy. Uh, scroll down uh, lower, um, Charlie. Scroll down. Get this guy lower. to go away, but he's still he's still kind of running down below here, I think. Yeah. So, you know, in this case, uh, was your model accuracy, accuracy, accuracy was, yeah, accuracy. accuracy is 9%, I think it's a little above, yeah, there it is, it's a little higher. Uh, yeah, collapse the uh, code, Charlie, collapse the code, because it gets a little busy. There we go. 
Right. Guy out of the way here, but I think he's still running down below, so it's a refresh problem here. Right. Yeah. So no, this I model it. He's still running down here at the bottom. So I am right to okay. hear you. Yep. Accuracy details. Accuracy details. Um, if you scroll up a bit, yeah. Oh, it's still sort of hung. Yeah. So um, in this particular case, the model accuracy is 89%. Um, you'll, if you expand, actually, we could calculate some summary measures that will have the 89%. Where do you get the 89%? It's the number of co uh, correct uh, predictions versus the total cases. That's five. Uh, 543 divided by 607. You can also see you've got uh, uh, true positives, false positives, true negatives, false negatives. And so you've got that available to you. You can see uh, just another measure of the accuracy. If you scroll down into the, mod into the prediction details though, well, and you can also the see the distribution of the predictions there. Uh, you can see that there's, you know, a large number who are who have only a 10% likelihood of leaving, and then uh, as you move towards the 80 and 90%, the number drops. But it gives you a a picture of where your risk is. What you know, what level of risk do you have for the different deciles in terms of potential potentially leaving? If you scroll down further, the model details right here. Uh, hold it right there, um, Charlie. Trying to get this guy out of the way here. And, um, yeah, yeah, no. If you look at individual cases, it's very interesting to see that, well, why did a single person leave? Like, why did this person leave? And in the case of employee number one, um, you can see that if you scroll up, you can see the, the kind of... Uh, over time. Yeah, over time, you know that over time is, has a, a direct effect on whether they'll leave, uh, their marital status, they're single, the number of companies they worked is eight, so they've job hopped, the work-life balance is poor, and they're not very satisfied with their job. And you can see the relative weight and the ranking there. All of that's in the prediction details. And the second employee is completely the opposite. They've been in their job for seven years. They're, they've been uh, reporting to the same manager for seven years. They're at the middle of their career. And so the reasons why they might stay are all based on, on those, those factors that we've identified when we built the model. Now we can go on to score the, you know, take, make predictions lower down. This model shows you all those predictions. Um, just a couple of final things I want to just touch on, and that is um, we can actually, uh, do a what if scenario, it's lower down there, Charlie, do a what if scenario and say, well, what if I deny overtime? How is that gonna affect whether or not somebody's gonna leave? So you can actually use SQL, good old SQL, to, to play what if, it's down lower, yeah, here, and you can see that 69 employees are predicted to leave with the current overtime, but if you deny overtime and get the work-life balance into shape, it drops down to, I think, around seven, and if you force overtime and make everybody work all the time, it goes up to 218. So this is a great way to play what if. I can change policy. How is that going to affect outcomes? Really, really super interesting. And the last thing I want to share with you is the fact that you can bias the model. If false uh, positives are very expensive, you can bias the model and say, People leaving that I, good employees that are leaving that I did not want to leave are five times as more expensive than if I incent them to stay when they're going to stay anyway. And so what this allows you to do is bias the model, uh, put a relative cost to errors, a relative cost to wrong predictions, and influence the model to incent more people to avoid the, the case where somebody is left. Because anyone that has more than a 50% chance of leaving is predicted to leave, and that might be considered a pretty low bar. So model biasing is available. It's great. Um, it's a great way to, um, to go beyond simply predicting it, but to start uh, shaping it uh, to avoid costly errors. So Charlie, I think, I'm sorry about the network issues. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm running on my phone, say. as I told you earlier. Yeah, it's very, yeah, very, yeah. Uh, very good improvising there.
Um, well, I just to let everybody know, Charlie and I and the rest of the team have recorded this, and we had, you know, and we've got a very clean recording. But um, but stand by, we've got the others on on board. So back to you, Charlie. All right, great job. And sorry, I probably shouldn't have pressed go here. I was just kind of excited about just how quickly all these results come out here in one, two, three seconds. And I got this. I don't. I'm gonna hit refresh here just for the heck of it. And and probably that little guy's gonna go away. But at this point, I'm gonna turn it over. Uh, so, so thank you, Derek. Derek has solved our prediction problem, right? Or not completely solved it, but he certainly uh, analyzed a bunch of data. We have all these different predictions of who's uh, likely to leave or stay. We even know the the reasons why with the with the uh, what's called prediction underscore details that we show. So he's done quite a bit here. But where are the results? Well, they're they're in the database. They're kind of hidden in there in some ways. We want to get them out to other managers to sort of review the results. He's got all these really nice. Uh, now it's all cleaned up, so it's a little bit better now. Uh, we've got all these results, all these tables of data of who's likely to leave or stay with the reasons why, all this kind of cool stuff. And what better way to take a look at this than to uh, use some of the other tools that come from Oracle. We're going to start with Oracle Application Express. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Rosie Parma, who is going to um, show us how to uh, do more. So I think I've stopped sharing, and I think you can start sharing. I think I've stopped sharing. If not, you can start sharing now. Uh I think you're still introduce sharing. yourself. You still sharing, Charlie? Am I still sharing? Um, it says that I am sharing now, and uh, that would be sharing. So I'm going to go right to here, and then I'm going to go over to uh, Zoom. And I think you just have to say you're going to start sharing because I can't. Uh, there's nothing here that says for me to stop sharing. So um, just click share. It tells me that I cannot start screen share unless someone else is sharing. Uh, tell you what, I will leave and come right back in. Well, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, Are you sharing, Charlie? Since I don't think I'm sharing right now, no. I'm, do you guys see anything on your screen? I only no. see Rosie. No, I see. I see yeah. Yeah. You can see that we are viewing Charlie's screen. Okay, I just found it. I just found the controls. Sorry, just figured that one out. It's a shortcut key I didn't realize was there. Now we see your screen. Very good. Thank you. Great. Um, hello, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rosie Pamar, and I work as a cloud solutions engineer at Oracle. Um, the primary focus that uh, I uh, rely on is information management pillar. So I work a lot around uh, autonomous databases, Oracle Apex. Um, so let's just quickly have a look at uh, what Oracle Apex has to offer here. Um, so when we talk about Oracle Apex, it's basically um, a low-code uh, development platform that uh, basically enables our customers to build scalable, mobile-friendly, and secure enterprise applications with the world-class features. So uh, given the fact that you know, we talked about this being a low-code platform, so what it does is it basically empowers our developers to deploy uh, compelling apps um, that solve real problems and they provide immediate solutions. And the best part uh, about Apex is the fact that you, know, you don't need to be an expert in a vast array of technologies to deliver these sophisticated solutions. You just need to have like a basic understanding of how SQL and maybe REST works and you're good to go. Um, and Apex basically, because it's, uh, it sits directly on top of an Oracle database, uh, it uses a very, very simple architecture um, that, you know, uh, in return, it makes sure that your applications are running in a very, very quick manner because as we discussed, Apex sits right on top of the database, right? So that means um, it ensures that there is zero data, uh, latency, uh, you know, in getting the data, in, in getting access to the data, um, making sure your uh, applications, they run, um, you know, completely, um, um, the applications are completely scalable. They are, uh, you know, performant uh, when, the load increases um, on the database, it's still able to you know, uh, perform well in terms of speed, in terms of performance, everything. Uh, and the best part about uh, Apex is uh, it always, it's also um, available free. Um, so if you are aware of always free Oracle Cloud Services, Oracle Apex is also included in that. And if you're new to Oracle Apex, we have a huge developer community that you could be a part of um, in order to get, you know, start uh, building up your skill sets around it. Uh, around it. 
Um, so let's do one thing. Let's just go and jump into the demo that we have prepared for you guys today. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to talk about is um, something called as faceted search. Now that we know that, uh, you know, we have data sitting in our database natively. Now, how do we make uh, sure that, you know, we make sense out of the data? Or how do we do any kinds of manipulations or any kinds of, how do we make an understanding out of that data set, basically? So we have something called a uh, faceted search that comes uh, completely out of the box with uh, Oracle Apex. Um, so basically, without having to write a single piece of code, I could get this particular uh, faceted search capability where you can see that uh, based on the data that was uh, um, that was sitting in the data, it was able to intelligently detect what kind of facets we would need. Uh, so if you look at the left hand side, uh, these are the different facets that were uh, created by default. So for example, in this one, I've check marked that I want to look at the report, um, look at the report where attrition pr prediction came out as yes. And maybe, you know, I want to do, the next part would be maybe I want to look at uh, more closely into, um, into a specific department where attrition prediction was um, predicted as yes, right? So this is something like, uh, which completely comes out of the box. You didn't have to write anything. But another great feature about Apex is like, um, you know, you can have, uh, you can add custom piece of code as well. So for example, in this case, what we did was we basically uh, created a, um, another, um, another, um, um, you know, another aspect here, uh, which is like a dashboard. And what we did was we coupled together the dashboard as well, as well as the report. So basically when I, um, what it does is when I change any of these facets, I, this what it is going to do is it's going to dynamically uh you know um and make sure that both these um um both these aspects they come um you know uh they come um prepared with the data which uh filters according to the facets here so for example now that i chose the, the department is research and development now i can see okay um, uh, given the fact that prediction percentage prediction was yes, um, these are the some of, some of the numbers that I could see. For example, in R and D department, these are the number of people who were predicted as um, yes they would be leaving, were traveling frequently or traveling not traveling at all or traveling rarely. So it's just a great way to for the users to see data in new ways and discover new insights effortlessly without having to you know write a whole bunch of code. Um, so that's pretty much it from my end. Um, I would like to pass uh, it to Dhwani now. Thanks, Rosie. Mission is clean. Hi everybody, my name is Dhwani Shet and I'm a senior cloud engineer at Oracle. So we saw uh, Derek going over Oracle machine learning and Rosie uh, starting with Apex. So now let's see uh, some more uh, visualizations of graphs that you can create with Apex and what you can, what other information can we get uh, from the data set and the machine learning models that we have built in OML using Apex. So we know uh, that Apex is directly uh, connected to the autonomous data warehouse. You don't have to move the data or do anything with it. And we can then directly use uh, Apex to uh, visualize some of the information that we have. So here, the first graph that we can see is the key factors that influence MPY attrition. We saw Derek uh, creating an attribute importance model for the data set that we have. And uh, we saw there that uh, the most important factors that influence and employee attrition are over time, job level, monthly income, and so on. So we can have this uh, visualization instead of a table here. And we can also, if you hover uh, over the graph or the bars, uh, we can see the value as well here. So this is one example of a horizontal bar chart. Uh, similarly, now scrolling down. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have a vertical bar chart where we have the employee attrition predictions. So uh, we had uh, Derek create an Oracle machine learning prediction model as to how many employees uh, would leave or not. And so we're using that model and uh, building a visualization uh, saying we have uh, 416 employees uh, that would be leaving. And uh, 
1054 employees not leaving. Next on the right hand side, we have a stat bar chart, another type of visualization uh, that Apex offers out of the box. And here we have an employee's uh, monthly, average monthly income by department. We can see that the, our data set has human resources, research and development and sales departments here. And uh, we, uh, we have distributed their uh, monthly average income and as well as uh, we have divided this uh, for each of the department, uh, we have divided the ratio into whether they would be leaving or not. So we have applied machine learning model onto this as well as onto our uh, the data set that we had and built a visualization to give us uh, what would be, uh, how many people would be leaving from which particular department and then what is their average monthly income. Scrolling down, we have two more. So on the bottom left, uh, we see a pyramid. Uh, so one such visualization that Apex also offers here. And what this depicts is uh, we have here is the number of employees by job role in our data set. So the base of the pyramid is where we have the highest number of employees here. So we know that uh, from here in our uh, data, uh, the most number of employees are from uh, or the job role that they have are sales executive. Then we have research scientist, uh, then laboratory technician. And the least amount of data that we have for a particular job role here in our data set is human resources. And similarly, all the values here is the total number of employees that uh, for each job role that we have in our data set. Then on the right hand side, we have another uh, plot. Now this is a box plot. And what this depicts is uh, groups numerical data through their quartiles. And uh, it is a way of summarizing a set of data measured on an interval scale here. So uh, here we have the employee monthly income distribution by marital status. So we have uh, three marital status in our uh, data set, divorced, married, and single. And if you hover here or on each of these, then you can see it gives you uh, the low. So what is the lowest uh, monthly income distribution in the divorced uh, range? And then we can see all the three quartiles here, Q1, Q2, Q3. Uh, then the highest uh, monthly income distribution uh, for a uh, divorce range. And then uh, this line gives you the median on each. So in this way, uh, we can visualize uh, the data as well as what we predicted or uh, created the machine learning models in OML using Apex. And now I'd like to pass on to Siddesh where he'll be showing more uh, such graphs and how we can build these quickly using Apex. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, thanks, Dwani. So, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sidesh, uh, also a cloud engineer here at Oracle. Um, so, one, I mean, we all know, uh, heard about, like, from Rosie and Dwani about uh, Apex and how easy it is to use. So, I'm going to use Apex to use the results that Derek showed through the OML notebook um, in order to uh, build graphs to make some predictions. So here, um, so here is the the first one is the probably at probability of attrition versus years at company, right? Uh, so the color coding here is basically the marital status, uh, single, married, and divorced. Uh, so it basically, this is a cool way to represent uh, based on marital status uh, probability of attrition versus uh, versus the years at company. So you can see. Uh, for each of the individual, you can see that if, it, if he's a married person, if he or she is a married person uh, versus uh, single versus um, divorce. So it's it's pretty cool to uh, view it in this particular way. Um, and also in addition, uh, when we talk about attrition, right, one of the major aspects when uh, that comes to uh, our mind would be the performance of employees as well as whether their employee is satisfied with uh, the job that he or she is doing. So the major two aspects here uh, that we are trying to visualize here is um, attrition prediction based on uh, performance rating uh, and job satisfaction. Uh, coming to performance rating, there are two uh, and like uh, two points, four and three, based on uh, the performance of employees. We rate them as four versus three in our data set. Um, and similarly, you can see here that um, there are 200 people with the performance of four that won't leave versus there are 111 people that might leave. 
Um, well, and it's the same thing with performance level three. So performance being lower, it, it sort of makes uh, sense, right? In the sense that performance being lower has a higher chance of leaving the organization. And then similarly for job satisfaction, uh, uh, perf- job satisfaction of a uh, lower, uh, there are more people uh, leaving uh, when the job satisfaction is one versus in compared to four where there are lesser people that are leaving. So this gives you an idea of how you can use Apex to build out uh, different visualizations and make predictions with the results that are in uh, OML. And everything, the, all these aspects, when we have, when we talk about the autonomous database, it's all packaged and available to you. Um, so, and then let me go into the more graphs. Uh, so just to add, uh, just to give you a more idea of the different types of graphs that we can create, uh, this is a pie chart showing the distribution of uh, employees across the different uh, departments. Um, and then another important thing is uh, in each of these departments, uh, you have in, in, a, in this particular data set, we have three departments, right? Human resources, research and development and sales. So you need to know what is a prediction of the number of employees that might leave the uh, department or might leave the organization. So this is a particular graph that shows you uh, in in detail about how many people will leave versus how many people will not leave. Uh, So it's pretty interesting uh, to get an idea. So we saw all these graphs that we've built out as part of the demo are built out, uh, pre-built for the demo. So let's see how easy it is to add to this, right? It's very, very easy. Um, Let me just quick edit this page. Uh, okay. It'll take a couple seconds. So within Apex, as Rosie and Dwani pointed out, it's very, very easy to just add on to whatever is existing because um, all you need is basic knowledge about SQL. So uh, once that is sorted, I think uh, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, it's, it's loading. Uh, For some reason, I'm facing internet issues too. So let me. For those of you who are uh, watching this on uh, the rewind on the on the uh, on demand, you can just speed up some of these slow slow sh- sections. I guess the internet's kind of slow for everyone today. Apologies for that. Yeah, sorry about that, but I don't know why it's taking a long time. Um, so basically, what you would do is you can either go, uh, do this from two places. I mean, if you're uh, trying to add on to whatever is existing. You can just go in and do a quick edit on that particular page. It will take you directly to that page or you can do it from the application main page, right? You can create your own pages. You can create, add to the pages and everything else. So there are two ways to do this. Um, For me, like since I'm doing it from this particular page, it's quick edit is much, much easier. Uh, Once this loads, I don't know why it's not loading, but ideally, okay, it's there. Okay. Um, there we go. Some internet issues. Understand. And the internet is slow today. Uh, so we have this pre-recorded as well. I mean, if it's, uh, yeah, I'm guessing it's taking too long. Yeah, it's it's pre-recorded on YouTube. I think it's posted on the chat. Uh, Gosh, maybe what we can do is uh, come back to this. If you get it up and running, we can just transition over to Philippe for a little while in the Q&A or whatever. We can come back and show the rest of this. Sure, sure. Okay. So uh, I will hand it over to Philippe. Just because sure. your internet is, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we have to improvise these guys, day, uh, these guys, th- these days, guys. So let's, I think Philippe's already, there he is. He's all set. So Philippe, take it away. I think Philippe's going to show us uh, some amazing new things. So uh, glad to have him here from. Uh, Thank from you very we... much. Thank you very much, uh, Charlie, for having uh, me in here. Let me confirm that you can hear me fine. 
Yes, we just haven't seen okay. your screen yet. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll stop the video just uh, to save on the bandwidth and let's go on for a few minutes here. Let me share briefly. Hey, uh, so I'm, I'm Philippe Lyons and you can see my screen, right? Can you confirm? It's a blank screen for now. Yes, right now we see a blank screen, yep. Okay, um, I'm Philippe Lyons and I'm on the, I'm the product, uh, working on the product management group in Oracle Analytics Cloud. And I'm super excited to see this presentation about the, uh, the power for Oracle machine learning here. Oracle Analytics Cloud is a data visualization solution, right? It allows users and analysts like me, I am not a data scientist, I am an analyst, I can connect data sets in OAC. So this is my own attrition data. And you know, my OAC allows me to simply double click and build some of these graphs. Uh, let me just randomly click on some graph here. I'm building uh, different graphs just by clicking on different objects and creating visualizations. That's what OAC is about. But what I'm interested in is obviously I can, I can click like this and build many of these charts and I can do all sorts of analysis within this data on attrition itself. This is a, a chart or a dashboard that I had prepared just before this call where I've built some charts showing me the number of employees and a calculation with the same data that you've been seeing so far. That calculation is attrition rate. That's the green line. So I can interact with OAC here. I can do filtering, all sorts of things and look at the data, but like for instance, I just clicked on one bar and it's filtering all the dashboard with this bar. You can see differences and so on. But really what I'm interested in here after I've seen you guys demo all of this is how could I, with OAC, directly leverage the machine learning model that I've been building OML. This is immensely powerful. My data set here is in ADW, it's a database. And here is what OAC will allow me to do or does allow me to do from now on. So I'm going to leave my dashboard here. Actually, yeah, let me toggle instead of leaving it. Let me toggle to a different uh, um, page here. Let me go back to my home page in OAC. And instead of building charts here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to register a machine learning model that Charlie and his team has been have been building, have been built, uh, have built, right? So when I register, I'm selecting the database where this has been built. So in my case, it's an ADW uh, machine, and I have all of these models that uh, Derek was talking to us about. So they have built all that intelligence in their models. I am an analyst, all I want is to apply one of these models. So let me uh, select, for instance, this one, I click on it. This is showing me that this is a classification model. It's using a naive Bayes algorithm and it's targeting attrition. It has so many input columns here as part of it. It obviously uh, delivers a lot of output columns, which are all the prediction details, prediction sets, and all that uh, intelligence or insight that, always, that uh, ADW can provide and a few parameters information. Let me say that I'm interested in using this one and I'll call it Philips model. Now when I call it, I just registered this name in OAC and all that this is doing, it's saying, of course, I'm having a, a login issue, but yeah, boom, okay. All right, so let me go and I have pre-registered this, right? So this, these are models that I just registered. Registering is just declaring in OAC that, hey, I want, OAC to use one of these models that have been built on ADW by the data science team. So I just registered this a little bit before this demo. So let me actually go and look at it. All right, this is a machine learning tab within OAC. And that is telling me that, okay, yeah, this model has been registered and the administrator could set up access to it to some users or some roles in OAC. For now, I am an admin, so I only have um, access to this. I have a little bit more details about what this model is about. So that's the same as what we were looking at when we were registering it. And I even have a few more information if I was interested into on metadata and quality of this model. In the database, there's, there are various views that exist that will tell me about the uh, cost metrics or several settings about the model and they are these views and I could look at them via OAC. But that's not the point here. This is just telling me that, you know, there's a lot of information in the database and the models, model is pretty powerful. But really what I want to do 
is to use it. Remember, I'm a functional analyst, right? So we have a data set. We've just registered the model. So now we're going to just use it. So for this, in OAC, we're creating a data flow. Data flow is like a sequence of different steps applied to a data set. So let me create this, and I'm going to ask the system to use some my, my data, the data that I was having, which is employee attrition data. Uh, just to check, Charlie, can you hear me, hear me fine? Yes, I can. I just All had right, myself thanks. on mute. I, everything's looking right, thanks, great. Thanks, Sounds thanks. good. Everything's good. Yeah, I was just checking on the network. So that's my employee data. That's that's the one that I have on my side, which may be different from the one that Charlie has used or Derek has used to training it. And I'm going to use this data to apply a model. So in my data flow, I have apply model. And in apply model, sure enough, we can see the o, the ADW models that are in the same database as this database, this table. And here are these different models. So here's the attrition naive base one. Let me use this one. When I click OK here, it'll uh, basically ask me for, so let me actually collapse this data pane at the bottom. This is telling me that the model requires all of these inputs here, which uh, it found out that they already existed in my data set. So it was able to map what the model needs to what my data set has. I could override this, uh, override this if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna do it right now. There is just a parameter on, on a, a using cost feature in, in ADW or not, and then outputs. Outputs could be obviously prediction and probability, also cost, also various output about prediction set and prediction details. So prediction set is just going to help me understand what is what are the attributes that make up the first the top attributes that make up the prediction for each row what's the second attribute and its weight and what's the condition for each of them it's very powerful actually but you know what i'm going to ignore ignore this for a minute and and i'm just going to save that model output into a data set which i'll call um, prediction data set so this is obviously going to run in the database so it'll create a table in the database but you know that much i can understand but that's my limit in skills with the database so let me run this now actually i'm going to hit run oh i have to give it a name so the demo flow so now i'm saving this data flow it's a super simple one i could have had a, a lots of intermediary steps you know creating columns or aggregating stuff before that joining different data sets and then running them all but I'm doing it super simple here. And what's going on now is that really OEC does nothing. OEC pushes down the SQLs to the database and everything is happening in the database with OML. You saw it complete. So if I go to my data sets now, here's our, well, that's the data flow that we created. And I have a new data set that just got created which is this prediction data set. And that data set has all of this prediction information as part of it. If I open it or inspect it, I'll see lots of columns here, including prediction and all of these attributes. So that's my scored data. That's my data scored with your model, Charlie. Of course, from this point onward, it's easy for me to go and, 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 and add this into my, um, uh, excuse me, I, I opened the wrong project. I add this into my, uh, visualizations so uh, I can easily so I am running out of time for this but I can easily go back to where I was at the beginning I can add scoring data sets into my visualization project here so these are the scored using a naive base SVM uh, RF models here different models and then I can look at the results of different models using my own visualization. So you can see the prediction rate for naive Bayes or SVM models here, and you can see over the different dimensions how they're doing. Now it was super simple for me to build these Vs. I just had to drag and drop the objects, but I'm running out of time. So I'm going to the end result here. I can use this. This is a calculation of attrition rate, okay? Or I can also go and leverage some of the um, information that the OML model delivers, such as the probability itself, right? So it's not just the prediction, but how probable is the prediction? So hopefully this will come up. This is a different type of chart where I'm seeing that for a prediction of type yes, the person is going to attrit. What is the probability 
that it will happen for a different dimension. So now I'm leveraging a little bit more than just a prediction. I'm, I'm leveraging the probability. I can see that there is a lower probability uh, for people who are low, uh, working for a long time in the company or higher probability with single to be in the position, yes. So this is not just black and white. This is going probability. So look, there is a lot of visualizations I could do here. I have to stop for time's sake here, but uh, if I'll take questions offline. Thanks, Charlie. Back to you. All right, thank you. Um... So uh, everyone is uh, kind of wrestling with our internet challenges here. Here's my uh, backup slides, just in case uh, something wasn't going to work here. But so, okay, let me, so thank you very much for, the, um, for, uh, uh, for that, uh, Philippe and, and everyone else. So sort of wrapping up, uh, we're coming up on the hour here. All of this is available for you to get access to. It's in the uh, uh, demo, hub, uh, demo kit on GitHub. I think I put that in the chat window. Uh, if not, uh, if uh, someone else can paste the uh, the GitHub thing in there, that would be great uh, somewhere. It's um, it's the analytics and data Oracle user community. That's what's sort of fun about this. So we're trying to build a community of people who are using all these, uh, you know, essentially free autonomous databases, free machine learning, and free Apex, and and you know, trial copies of all the different functionalities, and just sort of pushing the uh, the state of the art of what people can do uh, in solving problems. So that's out there along with a bunch of other ones. You have access to that. And there are many other links that are out there for um, demos, uh, various versions of uh, similar presentations to this one and other related presentations and demos that are out there. Uh, there's a blog series I've been writing uh, um, on the changing role of the DBA from Oracle Data Professional to Oracle Data Scientist. And it kind of walks you through the different steps. We've been doing a lot of training. You see this out at uh, the last Oracle Open World where we all got together and there's these links, these links to these hands-on labs that if you just basically Google Oracle machine learning, you'll find all this, but I did put many of those links in there. And so if you've, if you've gone through this whole thing and you've followed these, these, um, these hands-on labs and read a little bit of the manual and kind of almost like a self-study kind of thing, uh, uh, taught yourself uh, how to do more and more, to, you know, expanded your Oracle data skills into more of uh, adding machine learning and analytical skills, then you know, congratulations, you are becoming an Oracle data scientist. You can harvest more information, uh, get more, uh, more value out of your data that's stored in the Oracle database. There is actually a, a course we've been working with Oracle University uh, with to try and push out something a little bit more formal than the sort of self-study, uh, you know, like learning on YouTube videos and such and blog readings. Uh, there's also a certification that we have underway, so look for those in the coming months. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank uh, all of my uh, most excellent presenters, Philippe, Rosie, Derek, Sadesh, Tavani, uh, Suzanne for setting this whole thing up. And at this point, um, we'll see if there's any uh, questions that are out there. Does anybody have any questions that we should be handling on the fly here or um, should we just wrap it up? Anybody see any more questions? Yeah, if anybody wants to keep putting the questions in the Q&A chat screen, Charlie, you can just check that out and see if there's any questions you can okay. feel free Let's to answer last. So I was looking through this just before I went over that. I didn't see any more questions. Does anybody else see any questions? We've answered a lot of these. Do you guys see my question and answer screen up on the screen right now? I don't know if you see that or not. I don't think you do, but I'll yes, flip we do. through this. We do. You do? Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I uh -huh. have flipped, so these are all the different links to the changing role and the customer references and the YouTube Oracle machine learning, just o.com slash machine learning. We'll get you there. These are a bunch of hands-on labs that you have access to. Uh, these, someone was asking about how are we building these things? Is it, is it uh, you know, what is it? The, what Derek showed was the Oracle machine learning notebooks. Uh, those come with the autonomous database. A few people, have, oh, uh, Devani has put in the GitHub. Thank you for that. Um, people have asked, well, how do I get access to this? You do have to go to the admin panel and, and grant a user, you know, like say, hey, create a user, Charlie, you can access the notebooks. Uh, and they have to, the DBA or whoever, if you're the DBA, have to give you access to those tables that you have or load some data. So there's a little bit of that. I did put a link into a, instructional video that kind of shows you how to do that. Um, Philippe answered this question, Application Express, everyone else has answered all these things. Thank you, Rosie and everyone else. I think we're all set. Any other questions anybody has? There's one question about the, um, the private or whatever uh, thing. I just don't understand that, the private and I just don't understand that. So send me a note afterwards, we'll try to do that. And with that, thank you uh, everyone for attending. Thank you all the great the co presenters here. Sorry for some of the internet challenges that a few of us have had along the way. It's everyone's dealing with these days. And thank you. Um, and this will be posted with the slides uh, uh, for you to download and access later on. Thank you, everyone. And have a good day.
Thanks, Charlie. Bye, all.